Welcome to a podcast by OpenTheWord.org, where we discuss a bit of Bible, a bit of life, and a bit of politics. Hi, my name's Wayne Johnson, and in this podcast today, I want to talk about redemption. The Bible is the book of God revealing his redemptive plans to restore mankind to a place of rest in himself. And I just loved all those R words. I want to share one of my favorite redemptive stories from the New Testament because it just reveals the heart of God that he's the God not only of the first, but the second, the third, the fourth chances. In Acts 13, verses 1 to 5, I want to read this passage. Quote, Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work which I have called them to. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. The great apostolic team of the book of Acts, Paul and Barnabas. They take on a young assistant in verse 5 by the name of John Mark, a young believer from Jerusalem, to help them. In verse 13, we see a problem. Now when Paul and his party set sail from Pathos, they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. It got too hot for John. As a young believer, he bails on them and runs home to mom. Paul was a person who you didn't do that to. And when I taught Bible college, I often did New Testament history. And I'd get to this part and I would share with the students, setting them up and asking them the question. If you had a chance as a young Bible school student to go on a mission trip with one of two people, who would you pick? And I said, how many would go with Paul? And most of them, yeah, Paul, yeah, yeah. And I, how many would go with Barnabas? And hardly anybody would put their hands up except me because I'm a little devious and a little older and a little smarter maybe, but I would go with Barnabas any day of the week. Paul was hard driven. He drove himself hard. And Paul was a take no prisoners type of person. In Paul's world, if you weren't getting stoned at least every other day, you just weren't up to it. When we jump ahead to Acts 15, 36 to 41, and I quote here, then after some days Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached in the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Great idea, Paul. Now Barnabas was determined to take with him John called Mark, but Paul insisted they should not take with them the one who had departed from Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia and strengthened the churches. God now has two teams out instead of one. And this sharp disagreement happened, and it still happens. We're human. But Barnabas, the son of consolation, which is what his name means, takes his young, broken cousin who had bailed on them and takes him and slowly puts him back together, gives him the second chance and works with him with Paul's reject. Have you ever had a mentor in your life who picked you up and cleaned you off and got you back on the right road? It's a great call. In verse 39, the Greek word for dispute means to dispute in anger or sharp contention. It was no small thing. This team was now broken up. 
Barnabas, it seems, forfeits his special place of ministry with Paul. Barnabas was willing to take his reputation and his call to be part of God's A-team. He forfeits that in order to bring hope to this Bible school dropout. Barnabas ends up kind of in the backwater and doesn't get mentioned much more in the New Testament after this. Years forward now, Paul is an older man, he's in prison, and he's writing to Timothy, and this is an interesting verse that Paul says. 2 Timothy 4.11, and I quote here, Paul is saying, only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you for he is useful to me for the ministry. He is useful to me. And this is Paul. The Greek word useful or profitable, I love this. The root word means well done. Don't you want to hear that from your Savior in the end? Well done, good and faithful servant. That's what this word useful means. And it towards the end of his life, as an older man, Paul is saying, hey, bring John Mark. He was put back together by Barnabas. He's useful. He's well done in the kingdom. John, in the meantime, had also become a companion and a help to a guy by the name of Peter. You might have heard of him in the New Testament. So at the end of this story, this second chance for a Bible school dropout, Barnabas puts his reputation and his ministry on hold and on the line by putting his cousin back together. And, well, John Mark, well, he ends up becoming a help to both Peter and Paul. Wow, talk about redemption. Two of the big names from the New Testament. But his greatest legacy is that John Mark ends up writing the second book of the New Testament that bears his name, the book of Mark. It's one and the same man. We serve a God of the second, the third, the fourth chances, and we need men and women in the kingdom like Barnabas who will take the broken and be willing to put themselves and their life on hold to put people back together and make them well done and profitable for the kingdom. Thanks for listening. Thanks again for joining us on our podcast. Please check out our website at opentheword.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to receive notifications of future broadcasts. As well, please take a moment to provide a rating and even a review. Thanks again for listening.